So I'm joined by Richard Benjamins from Telefonica. Richard, good to see you. Now, the last time we did this, um, it was about two years ago, I think, at this event. So tell us really, really where Telefonica is with its big data strategy. What's happened in the last two years? Where, where are we at today? Well, when we spoke two years ago, uh, I was the uh, business intelligence director for Telefonica Digital. And now, two years later, uh, Telefonica Digital has been merged with its Latin American operations and its European operations in a big organization, a new one, called uh, Chief Digital and Commercial Officer. And uh, Business Intelligence and Big Data has a very prominent position in that organization, where we drive the global strategy and we help the different countries in moving forward on their data journey. Good. So uh, lots of changes then. Um, obviously, we're particularly interested in what's working and what's not. If we talk about in internal data that you are using, can you tell us about some of the use cases that are really kind of working for you at the moment? Yes. Um, I think there are some uh, use cases uh, that are easy to do, and, uh, and they are not new in terms of doing the use case, but they are new in the terms of data that you can consider. Of course, one of them is churn churn reduction. A churn is still a huge opportunity. Uh, if you can get it one percentage down, it, it really helps. So what we're uh, trying to do new in those things is looking at call center data, like say get the raw data, what people say, analyze it, uh, do text analytics, find out reasons why people leave. Uh, we're trying to do customer journey things uh, where we check multi-channel pathways that customers have in order to understand really how they feel about their services, whether they're happy or whether they're not happy. And that are big use cases in terms of uh, the CSI or the NPS, uh, et cetera. Other use case that we are doing is about helping uh, to deploy our networks, 4G, 3G, uh, using analytics to decide where to deploy based on the value, uh, what we see, rather than based on uh, population and, and density. Obviously, uh, taking into account all the regulatory limitations. Yeah? Just two examples of uh, internal use cases. Okay. Now, obviously, Telefonica, uh, we know, was also looking to monetize data externally. Um, there's your Smart Steps uh, initiative. Can you give us an update on where that is today and what you're focusing on? Yeah. So we started in Smart Steps uh, rather as a platform oriented uh, approach uh, for the retail industry. Uh, we learned that uh, this is a new area, so you can't just build a platform from scratch. You have to understand the business. So that's what we pivoted to, a more agile approach. And we moved away a little bit from the retail industry because precision and accuracy is very important. And we could get to uh, accuracy, but at the cost. Yeah? So uh, we looked at other applications or use cases, other sectors where with, without this investment we could still deliver a lot of value. And one of those sectors is, for instance, the, the transport sector, where we see uh, how, people, how crowds move around, and that is relevant for uh, railway uh, companies or airline companies or uh, those kinds of companies, because we can give them an overview of where populations go in addition to what they see from their existing uh, customers. And another sector that we are, uh, where we are getting more success is in the public administration because we basically change the way they do their planning for public transport systems. Yeah. Usually they have, uh, in each metro station for example, they have a person that, uh, and they ask, where are you going? Is it for work or for pleasure? And they do that three days uh, in a certain area of the city and they use that to plan the, the metro system. Now, with our information, we see how crowds move, where they disappear in the metro, and so they get a much more preciseness, that they get it much cheaper, and they get it much more often, and that uh, improves the basic, the baseline for the planning process. Sure. Um, so again, lots going on, both internally and externally. Um, if you look over the next kind of 12 months, what do you regard as maybe your biggest challenge or two to really kind of exceed in this big data journey? I, th I don't think the biggest challenge uh, is changing a lot over, over the years. I think we still have a few uh, important challenges. One is uh, getting all the data we need, even though we have the data somewhere. It doesn't mean that this data has the right quality and is in a place where it's easy accessible for other things than it was originally created for. Uh, customer experience management for is, for example, for example an, an example of things that where you need a lot of different data sources, yeah, which traditionally are not in place. That's one problem, access to the data. Another challenge we have is more a cultural one, is the silos, yeah? So we are 
divided in many different silos. And in order to do big data, you need to bridge the gap between all those silos. And that is not an easy, an easy job. Yeah. Okay, Richard, thank you very much. You're welcome.